Hello everyone and welcome to my show Spotlight. I am JC Crisologo and today's Spotlight will be on Chaplin Doe. I consider her the Renaissance woman. <laughs> For, former uh, Metro Cop veteran and now she's an international filmmaker yes yes well I'm excited to be here JC uh, JC has been following me for some time we've been friends on Facebook yes. for years now for years um, and he reached out to me because he saw I was at the Cannes Film Festival yes and it's my second time it was my second time being at the Cannes mm -hmm. Film Festival I was really excited to be part of a group of producers that we yes. actually go an annual and you will leave <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. Every year, yes. we go, <laughs> that's funny, we go every year, and what's so fun about it is, as you mentioned, I'm an international filmmaker, so not only have I made films here in Las Vegas, I've made films and been in films in LA, I've also made films in Nicaragua and Costa Rica and in London. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Oh, and in Cyprus. How can I forget Cyprus? Yes. 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 <laughs> my gosh, my Cyprus. Whenever I hear the word Cyprus, I get so biblical. I think about oh, yes. that city that the uh, the Apostle Paul visited back in his time. Yes. That's and really... What's so lovely about that is uh, a story that I actually took to, to promote in the, at the Cannes mm -hmm. Film Festival in the market, in the film market, was called Lexi Zara, and it had gotten started out of Cyprus, out of uh -huh. when I was in Cyprus mm -hmm. as a filmmaker. Yes. I was there to promote another film, which was Toxic Love, but when I arrived actually in Cyprus, mm -hmm. every person I met had the same name which was like so freaky to me. I was like, cause you know, you're, you're in your taxi. You're like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. Hey, by the way, what's your name? He said, yes. oh, my name is Andreas. I was like, okay, cool. Yes. The guy who helped me at the airport, you know, with my luggage. Right. I said, thank you so much. I appreciate your assistance. I go, what is your name? He said, Andreas, right? Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, hmm. All right. Well, then yes. I get to my hotel. The front desk clerk who's checking me in, his name is? Andreas. Andreas. Okay, oh, right. So I'm goodness. like, what is going on with this, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First thing in the morning, I go to get the little bus pass to drive around the city, right? And you know I chat everybody up. I'm having a conversation. You know, I'm not just going to, you know, do a transaction and not greet them, say hello, chat a little bit with them, you know, because they speak English very well in Cyprus, yes, right? Yes. And so oh, I they asked, do? Yes, very well. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. So I asked the young man, I said, um, and what is your name? Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how is everyone uh -huh. that I've met so far that is yes. from this country named Andreas, right? So I sat back and I thought about it, got together with a couple other filmmakers while we were there. And I said, I told them a story, right? We're, we're, you're yucking it up. We're laughing. We're going. And then we were, and that was like, what's the meaning to that? You know, what's the significance of me running into all of these people named Andreas, yes. right? Well, we make a story out of it. Ooh. So what we ended up doing, um, I have to do a, a, a shout out to my friend Stamatis. Um, he was, Hello there. yeah, he was one of the brain children around us putting mm -hmm. together the story of Lexi Zara. So we created a story of an American woman named Lexi Zara that I portrayed. You know, we made a little video and she'd come to Cyprus and she kept running into all these guys named the same name and she wanted to figure out why. And the front desk clerk in our little short story tells her. Mm -hmm. because she didn't know her father. She never knew who her biological father was. Her mother refused to tell her. Her mother just told her as a child that her father left the family. That was it, right? So the daughter never pursued it because the mother remarried another man, and yes. that's the person who raised her, right? So she never looked for her father, right? But when she gets to the front desk clerk in this scenario, mm -hmm. he says to her, you look just like your father. Oh, wow. And she turns around and she's like, you know, is there somebody behind me? Who is this guy talking to? She says, he, you know, he says, yeah, you do. He goes, I never met my father. He said, yes, you have. You met him three times. Ooh. His name is Andreas Zara. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, psh, right? For her, and that's, yes. and that's how the little clip ends, is she's like, you know, mind blown. You know, now... If there's a reason why I'm hearing all these Andreases when I come here in this country for a father I never knew and yes. blah, 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 you yes. know. So the story and the adventures of Lexi Zara is about how she pursues that, how she goes back and confronts her mom and she says, you know, who, she, she comes in and she says, mom, 
who's Andrea Sara? Because the mother never told her, right? Mm -hmm. So she, when she puts it right there on the plate, what is the mom going to say now? She's right, going to have to say, right. that's your father. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's an interesting adventure. Yeah. And so I went to the Greek Pavilion in Cannes mm -hmm. when I was at the film festival, and I pitched it to them. And they they were pulling people out of offices to wow. come hear the wow. story. They oh, said, we goodness. love the story. The connection yes. between the, the black American woman who finds out that her father is mm -hmm. um, not from this. Cyprus. My father is from Greece. Oh my he disappeared gosh. in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's Greek born, which makes me makes my character part Greek, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I went to the Greek Pavilion, mm -hmm. and they were like, "We want to do it. We want to do it." So that's my next project moving forward after I wrap up and and do some post production on some other ones. Now, guess what? Because you're you're talking about you know your father, you know, being Greek, being Greek. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I learned here in America because I, I actually, I didn't realize that my last name was Greek the whole time. You're correct. I yes. thought it was Filipino Spanish. It's, it's Crisologo. Yes. So one time I, I had a, a customer in this store where I was working at and she looked at me and she said, your last name is Greek. And then I said, how, how can you say it's Greek? Well, it's Crisologo in, in Greek, Criso means gold and logo means to speak wow. so she said gold speaks wow so i i called my my dad a few days later and she said and he said well that's right it means golden speech right right Indeed. like a golden so tongue. i was like my mind just right blew. Psh, right you know yeah the, the thing about it is because you know i'm an ordained minister and, yes and yes. i studied I, I took my biblical yeah. study mm -hmm. where we studied the Greek and the Hebrew mm. and Latin and all of that. So to me to have this character end up being part Greek was just kind of like a godsend for me because the idea of my character ending up being part Greek and how I can build that in story, you know, not just in the the scenario of her looking for her father, but also all the, the Greek connections and how she'll get to go to historical places, you know, that me as, you know, as a minister, I'm going to just, you know, love the exploration and how I can bring that in. Yes. So it, it's total. it was totally God, right, to begin yes, with, yes. that we all had, that, that they all had the same name, mm -hmm. but then also to go to the film festival, which the Cannes Film Festival is place where people go and some people just go to see movies that's not us we go about business because it is a business it's a film market yeah you get the opportunity to go there and either take some of your finished projects and see if you can get distribution uh -huh. or to take a project you're working on and see if you can get funding oh, you know so yeah so that's yes. what the con film festival yes, is all about yes. well most people oh just gosh. think it's red carpets which i got lots of red carpet yes, pictures yes, you know i got yeah. some films in i yeah. always run into amazing celebrities while i'm there yes i'm I was sure yeah on the plane with Richard Lawson. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and ended oh, wow. up following up with him. It actually was so funny because he and I are at Luggage Claim, right? And he has on, uh, all you filmmakers know this, we usually make our film shirts with the picture of our poster on the front uh -huh, of it. Uh -huh. You know, wherever we go, we're showing yes. it off. You know, yes. if we're at a film festival, we're promoting. So uh -huh. same thing in cons. People are doing this. So I see this man standing with a shirt on and it says Black Terror and it's got the picture mm -hmm, of his mm -hmm. uh, poster on it, yes, right? Yes, Well, I'm like, okay, we're waiting on this. Like, it's taking forever. I might as well start a conversation with him, right? Not recognizing who he is. We're chit-chatting, we're talking back and forth. Bear in mind, this, th this man has a classical voice, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm still not getting it, okay? Yes. I'm just da-da-da, blah, blah. Oh, you're going to film, you got to film in there, ba da 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 right? And then he's like, I said, oh, you know what? My name is Tamia Dow. Yes. How are you? Nice <laughs> to meet you. And he said, um, mm -hmm. my name is Richard Lawson. Oh, wow. And I was like, <laughs> yes, it is. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm standing here all this time chit chatting I with love Richard Lawson, yeah. like, you know, another guy on the plane, because yes, he was yes. another guy on the plane, you know? Yes. So I always tell people you never know who you're sitting next to, especially if you go to a film festival. Or if you go to any kind of, not even film market, but any kind of a premiere or anything like that having to do with movies or films, you never know who you're sitting next to. Yes, yes. You literally could be sitting next to a producer, a director, another filmmaker you could yes. eventually end up working with, which is how I ended up being an international um, yeah, filmmaker. filmmaker yeah. It's because I met a bunch of folks, actually here in Vegas, we all met at a, inter, at a film festival yeah. in Vegas, and they were from Italy... Spain, France, I'm trying not to leave people out because I keep doing it, right. Sweden, uh -huh. you know, they're all, we're all over they're the country, all, yeah. right? 
We meet back up again at another film festival in Spain, the Love and Hope Film Festival that's in September. The guy who runs the film festival writes in parts for different wow, people. Wow. He wrote in a part for me as a serial killer. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't imagine. <laughs> That's what's called acting, uh, right? Okay. Yes, yes, so, yes. <laughs> he wrote in a part for me as a serial killer, which was, and it's, it was when I read it, he goes, he goes, hey, I want you to read um, this part and see if it's something you'd want to do, right? He goes, I wrote it for you, right? So I'm reading it, and this woman is definitely a serial killer. She is off the chain, right? I was like, you know what? Yes, I'll do it. He goes, okay. We're filming in November in Nicaragua. Oh my God! So, <laughs> like, so ah! you're, you, you are a, a chameleon, just like my favorite actress Octavia Spencer. People often uh, make that comparison. Octavia yes. <laughs> is such a chameleon. I mean, in, in the Shack, I love her. She, in the Shack, yeah. she she played God in a womanly form. Yes, she did. <laughs> I she love did. it. I love that. And then in another movie, in that movie of Guillermo del Toro. Um, oh, it was it? about a sea creature. She 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 played a different character, like totally different personality. Right, right. Amazing, That's funny. Amazing, you would come amazing. up with Octavia Spencer, mm -hmm. and yeah. that you would also mention Shack. Okay, because yes. when I was in Bible college, one of the books we had to read was The Shack. The Shack. Yeah. And my student, the you know, my uh, what is it? Mm -hmm. My students that, but they weren't my students. Who do I want to say? The the my peers, right? My yes, peer students yes, at the yes. time. They all said when they read the book that they envisioned me as that character. Oh my so God. to me, that's hilarious. That because at the oh time it hadn't God. been cast, the book was yes. just written but not cast, right? Oh my and then they cast Octavia, and mm -hmm. people keep telling me that they oh every time I see Octavia, I always think of you and your style of acting. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was a compliment. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So now my uh, the directoire is telling me that I am number one, which means that we are going on a commercial break. <laughs> we are number <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> we are number one. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys when we get back. Yes. <laughs> Traditional TV is going away. Hollywood is starting to fade. People are demanding real stories from real people. Our voices are now being heard in our own way. Podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok Live are becoming the norm. Internet TV has now reached the highest demand in human history. Social Media Shows is now the new media of the century. It's a tough market. We get it. Home inventory is at an all-time low. It's a seller's market, and cash buyers have the advantage. Recently, cash buyers made up more than a quarter of all home purchases. But we have the solution. New American Funding's Buyer Accepted Program allows your buyers to compete with all cash offers by becoming cash buyers themselves. Here's how it works. Buyer Accepted LLC, an affiliated company of New American Funding, will purchase your buyer's new home with cash and sell it back to them for the original purchase price, plus a fee that can be added to the purchase of the home once they secure mortgage financing with New American Funding. The best part is that they don't need to sell their current home first. This is a true cash offer. Clients who use our Buyer Accepted program can secure financing using a conventional loan and even VA. Plus, there are no fees for agents and no sacrificing commissions. Buyer Accepted even offers a free one-hour certification course that will make you the expert. You want to close more deals and help more clients? New American Funding's Buyer Accepted program is the answer. Got Films is a full-service production company that provides motion picture quality content and production services for use in the film and TV industry. Looking for a seasoned crew, high-quality equipment, or other production services for your film, TV, commercial, corporate conventions, sports, news, or interview project? 
your search stops here. Some of our projects include NASCAR, American Restoration, Pawn Stars, Counting Cars, Top Chef, BattleBots, Forge and Fire, and Street Outlaws. We have also produced over 60 feature films and documentaries. We're ready for all your needs. Whatever your project, whatever your budget, big or small, Got Films got you. GotFilms.com I can already feel you judging me, and not for what I've done in the past, but for what I'm about to do. I had what mattered, and I, uh, I got, I got careless. Like, I don't deserve more. I don't deserve sympathy. I don't deserve to be here. Where the hell are you? Why aren't you answering your phone? Jenna! What is the matter with you? Someone once told me, you may not be everybody's cup of tea. You're somebody's shot of whiskey. Excuse me, ma'am. My, my car ran out of gas and I left my wallet at home. Could you please spare a couple dollars so I can refuel my vehicle? I literally have nothing. What's it gonna take to get you to join a program? Get the back dog! If Jesus wanted you to have a dog, he would have blessed you with a bowl and a leash now, wouldn't he? And welcome back to our last but not the least segment of Spotlight. And this is where the meat is. Come on. This is this is the main course. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and we're really gonna bring it. If you think we brought it in the the first segment, <laughs> this is gonna be the grab the bomb. your sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pretty exciting conversation. That we yes, had, offline yeah. and online. And, yes. and, and online. Oh, my goodness. Well, I tell you what, I'll just get to it, all right? Because you have a preacher in the house, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. She, she is preacher in the house. Yep. Preacher, and teacher, filmmaker. God and, is know, in the house. Amen. Everywhere I go. Always, yep. constantly. Yep. So a little bit yep. offline, mm -hmm. we were sharing about... Uh, the newest book that I have coming up, he had actually said the name, and I said, you yes. know what? That's the newest book that we're working on. She's an on. author too. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a best, uh, best number selling. one best-selling author. Yes. I've helped over seventy other officers, or officers, other authors, yes. tell their testimonies and yes. be able to testify as to how Jesus has changed their life. You know how yes. God has worked and moved in mm -hmm. their life, moving pathways out, and a little bit of what we were talking about on the break and what I share with my, mm -hmm. my students. Now, bear in mind, you don't have to be a Christian author to work with me. I work with everybody, mm -hmm. uh, but I go. do help you walk through your process and remember yes. the things that God has brought you through. So the first book in the series that I walked the authors through was called Faith Is. And what it is, is it's a guided, directed workshop. Mm -hmm. it, it goes on over a couple of weeks. And the authors are given writing prompts and techniques and ways to write and tell their story. And then once they're finished, they submit their stories and we hone them, we get them nice and tight, and then we put them together in a compilation and we do a book. All the books are available on Amazon under my name. Faith Is was the first one. The second one was Jesus Is, Love Is, Hope Is. Wow. The most recent one was Forgiveness Is. Yes. And then the one we are currently working on, we just had our last class on mm -hmm. uh, July 1st in class, and now they're writing. And that is called Grace Is. Yes. yes. And why it's so important is, I think it, for those of you, whether you're a believer or not, I think it's so important how you start your day and, and where you put your mind at as a creator. Yes. You know, as a creator, it is important to figure out where you're getting your downloads from. Yes. You know, yes. where you're getting them from and when you're getting mm -hmm. them. 
Most of us creatives tend to get it in the morning. Some of us get awakened in the middle of the night with yes. the ideas yes. that we have. That we get it from a dream or inspiration, something like that. But what I talk to my, my authors about is that you have to first surrender your mind. Yes, yes. And say, now I'm open, right? Because if you don't do that, if you if you go on with all these distractions that are oh, in yes, our world, yes, you yes, know, yeah, yeah. You're going to always say to yourself, oh, I don't have time. Oh, I can't uh -huh. do that. Yes. I can't yes. get to that. Yes. Okay. You can make time. Anything that's important, you will make time for. And part of what I say, because, of course, I'm a woman of God, so I encourage the, some people call it meditation. I call it prayer. The, the focused morning, you focus your morning as to, Lord, what is it that you'll have me do today? Right. Yes. Uh, and what is it that you have me do today? It could be something so simple as I need you to go to Starbucks. Right? Yeah, I want you to yeah, go yeah. to Panera. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you don't know why he's sending you to right. Starbucks or Panera. Yeah. You know, you can get a cup of coffee at both yes. places. Right. Yet you never know the divine appointment that may be there for you. When I mm -hmm. reached over and shook Richard yes. Lawson's hand, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we connected. We talked. Yes. We, yes. we talked throughout the festival, you know, from just being at the airport at that time, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. from just following the prompt from the Lord to go over and talk to this guy who had, you know, a, a poster on his shirt. Yes, you know what yes. I mean? You never know how you can be used, number one, to inspire someone else, or that inspiration could be there for you. Meaning, you go to that Starbucks, you go to that Panera's, and then you run into JC. <laughs> you run into me. You know, you yes. run into someone else who sparks you. And you've been sitting at home going, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time for whatever the creative thing is. Yeah. And now you see another creative that you know is out there doing what they're supposed to do. And you know right away, you're like, okay, you set this up. This yes. is a divine yes. appointment. You set it up so that I would see this person. And I know that the minute they open their mouth, yes. they're going to speak encouragement into me. And I need to get to work. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. That that's truly amazing. Yeah, it's very it's very important that we yeah. as creatives, because you guys, the time is short. Okay. Yeah. Time <laughs> the time is, is short. short, and what we need to realize is tomorrow's not promised to any of us. No, it's not. We yeah. see that even in our in our el yeah. in our acting realm. All of a sudden, someone will give us a message and say such and such is not with us anymore. You know, yeah. and you'll be yeah. like, oh, they were only twenty, or they were only thirty. Right. They, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -mm. There's no clock that says you're guaranteed. Any time, right? Yes. Past this time, right now. So if you are in the moment, which you should always live in the moment, not planning ahead, you know something's coming up. It might be nice tomorrow if you were able to go to this. Mm -hmm. what, should, what do you need to be about right now, right? Yes. What do you need to put that phone down, turn the TV off, sit down and start writing about what is it? Because it's coming to you right now, and you're chasing distractions. Yes. You're running after squirrels. Mm -hmm. You can you get to the end of your day, and you're going, what did I do? Uh -huh, nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what did I do? What did I accomplish? <laughs> nothing. Because yes. you you know you're you're flipping through the net. Well, I won't yes. say the name of the thing, but you're flipping through the channels. <laughs> you yes, know, you're yes. doing all this stuff that's mm -hmm. really doing nothing to move forward. And mm -hmm. for me, I always say, for your legacy, for what you're going to leave behind to this world when you're not here anymore. Yes. Because they can't pull. They can't yeah. go to the grave site and, and, and go to your corpse and pull out mm -hmm. all those great ideas that no, you have no, in your head, yeah. right? The minute you breathe your last, they cease to exist. Right. So right. I know this is a word for, for actually many of our viewers. Yes. It's about get about, I say God's business, getting your legacy right, yes. leaving behind a message and your creativeness mm -hmm. so there can be a blessing to the people who come behind you. Because like I said... When you breathe your last, that's it. It's done. Yeah, but it's almost like the great big fashion designers out there, you know. YSL, Yves Saint Laurent has left a great legacy through his styled fashion. He's, you know, been dead for like 30 years ago. Right. But, but he left his stamp and now the fashion house lives on. Or even Louis Vuitton, who has been dead like 100 years ago now that label right. still lives on, or even the controversial Coco Chanel. Right. Mm -hmm. and they, they were saying that she was like a Nazi sympathizer, but that's a whole I've different heard story. I've so different things, <laughs> yes, yes. But her legacy lives on. Right. And that's right. what we need to do to leave our, leave our, our legacies behind. 
Right. And, so yeah. I would really encourage everybody to do that. And and part of that is because, uh, of course, I work with writers, you mm -hmm. know, so I would encourage everybody. I don't know if you used to do it when you were younger or what, but mm -hmm. I would encourage you to start journaling. Uh, yes. and, I, and I encourage people to start journaling in the morning and at night. And here's why. It focuses you, okay, for one thing. I always say in your first set of journals, sit down, five minutes, mm -hmm. first thing in the morning, what am I grateful for? Beautiful. What am I thankful for? Yes. What are my blessings? Okay. And mm -hmm. you can do that, you know, that could, Monday could be grateful and that's supposed to be thankful. You know, the next one could be blessings, but it was a, it's about a writer's prompt. Okay. Yes. So when you take that writer's prompt that says, what am I thankful for? You know, what am I grateful for? This and write for five minutes, nonstop, five minutes, nonstop. Okay. Even sit here and go, man, coach Tamia said I had to da -da 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 -da. do it. Okay. I promise you. Do it consistently for 10 days and then you get a hold of me and I bet you will have been inspired to create, to create, to yeah, create, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whether it's your, your next film, you know, whether it's your own book, you know, whether yes. it's to design some clothes or whatever that's come to your mind. Like we said here, yes. creatives writing is so important because it sparks yes. so many aspects of mm -hmm. us. And when I say writing, you see, I'm doing this. There's a reason why I'm doing this. Yes. Because it's old school. My, 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 my uh, students tease me because they said their calluses built back up on their fingers. Mm -hmm. Who remembers that, right? I do. Right? <laughs> when we used to write so I'm much in class yes. and you'd have the calluses on your uh -huh. fingers. It's all about occupying the three learning modalities for us. Mm -hmm. I'm being a teacher here, y'all. But, okay, writing, right? Visual. Okay? Auditory. When we're writing, do we hear what we're writing? We do, right? You know, if you're writing, oh, I really love it, you hear we, it. And then in my case, because I, I also dabble in, in, in script writing, I, oh. I see it. Yes, yes, I, visual, I see that's it. So the three the modalities, scene, yeah. you got it. The three modalities. She what? said this and she said this yes. and this yes. is the way she yes. reacted. You exactly. Know? Like so you, it's, so it, you yeah. hear the audio, yeah. you do kinesthetic, which is the writing, yeah. that's mm -hmm. the physical, and then you see the, vis the visual, the, you know, which mm -hmm. really helps to spark. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's a creative out there and they're trying to figure out how to get that spark, you know, and it also helps with the blank page syndrome. The, yes. You know, when you're looking at the blank page and you're going, I really have this great idea for a script, I would love to this mm -hmm. and this this and then you're looking at the page and going i have no clue what to write yeah yeah just start writing and now i'd like to segue a little bit on the um emotional ins uh, inspiration behind the creativity i know that you've spent years many many years ago you you were uh, a cop and you've witnessed a lot of uh, domestic uh, violence and i'm sure that you were also able to draw something out of that with yeah my first uh, my first four short films were about things mm -hmm. that I dealt with as a police officer beautiful yeah yes. so and then and then uh, another one I but actually I dealt with a lot as a police officer I'm mm -hmm. actually a retired yes, police yes, officer she's reti retired yes. means I Getting put in my time straight. and they gave me money okay <laughs> now she's a filmmaker <laughs> yeah I, I didn't I didn't play one on TV yeah. I was for real right. deal right you know I was a detective when I retired mm -hmm. You know, and the thing about it is the things that I saw, I cannot unsee, but I look at it like this because I asked the Lord, I says, what am I supposed to do with all of this? Yes. You know, I retired very highly educated. I started the, the department highly mm -hmm, educated. Mm -hmm. I had a criminal justice degree. You know, so now the Lord told me, travel the world. I traveled the world for three to four years visiting other police officers around the uh, around the world. I was in uh, Kenya, Uganda. Wow, I went to Russia. I yes. went to Germany, you know, to visit mm -hmm. other police officers who were exposing me to their culture and how women were dealt with in their culture because I've always been very compassionate about women's issues because as you mentioned, I work domestic violence and and predominantly the victims of domestic violence are women. Yes. You know, they're men. I've I've dealt with many men who were victims of domestic violence but more Women, women, right? Yes, yes. So part of that, um, like when I went to retire or when I retired was I asked the Lord, what is it you would like me to do with my knowledge and skills yes. and ability? Yes. And basically fast forward, he said, go into filmmaking. So that's oh why I do films gosh. now. That yeah. is so amazing. And that's all the time we have. Unfortunately. But <laughs> unfortunately, but it's been a great pleasure yes. of having you in, in my show. And um I would love to 
promote the film about Andreas yes. and my show Spotlight. Yes, most definitely. Yes, I'll come yes, back and for that. I would That'll love to awesome. see it yes. and talk about that movie. Yes, I'm so, excited about Andreas. I think it's going to open the door for a lot of even biblical connections. That, yes, you know, so, yes. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much. It's been amazing. An thank amazing you. Uh, 30 short minutes. <laughs> oh, so short. So quick. <laughs> Anyways, find me. Google me. To yes. me and now, I'm everywhere. <laughs> and like I always, I, I always have like a funny anecdote for people out there. If, if you're uh, weight watching, don't forget to eat your celery because it's the vegetable that eats you. See you next time. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs>